Hello? What's your favorite scary movie? Nice try, Ghostface. My favorite scary movie. Scary movie. That being said, let's get Crutch away. <laughs> What's up, Crutch Activist? Kenzie Retro here. At long last, 2022 reviews are... My movie reviews are back. This time around, we're going to be looking at Scream, released in 2022. Released in January. I have been trying to get this done for a few weeks now. And now, we are finally here to be able to get it done. So, this is the fifth entry in the long-running franchise. You've got new characters, and of course, you've got your legacy characters as well. So, I am going to try and keep this as... as unlike uh, things like the Kingdom of Isolation reviews... Kingdom of Isolation, uh, unlike the Kingdom of Isolation episodes that I do, these film reviews are going to be spoiler free. So, just for context, this was confirmed not to be a reboot, but more a, a sequel with the same name as the first film, akin to that of Halloween in 2018. So there's that. Um, uh, it's done pretty well, as far as it's as far as its uh, box uh, as far as its reception is concerned. Uh, One hundred and twenty million dollars on a twenty four million dollar budget. So there's that. It's um, it's done by the same team uh, that did Ready or Not, Radio Silence, uh, and you've also got um, Brian Tyler helping with the music. I'll get into the soundtrack. Um, well, I, I can't really say much about the soundtrack um, at the moment, but anyway. Um, but that being said, um, it is, without a doubt, one of the best horror films that I've seen in uh, recent years. Um, so, uh, let's see. So, uh, hang on a second. This must be the next one. Uh, this is the first one. Not this is the first screen film not to be uh, directed by Wes Craven since he passed away in uh, 2015. The film was dedicated to him in the closing credits. Um, so there's that as well. Um, so. Um, yeah. Um, so let's see. There we go. Um, I won't go into too much detail regarding the behind the scenes stuff because, uh, with one or two names that were involved previously with the Scream franchise, I would rather not mention them just because. What they what they did was disgusting. Anyway, uh, the rights to the franchise were handed over to the Spyglass Media Group, and it was distributed by Paramount Pictures this time around. So I wouldn't be too surprised if this lands on Paramount Plus, alongside possibly the rest of the franchise. I'm talking like the, the film franchise because you've got the TV series on um, Netflix. That being said, um. There's only uh, there's only three uh, there's only three areas that I'm gonna be um, there's only three areas I'm gonna be touching on as far as this uh, review uh, is concerned the story the characters and the visuals uh, I can't include legacy and um, I'm gonna try my best to go through the soundtrack but uh, I can't guarantee anything regarding that um, but anyway the story 
has great pacing uh, throughout and it definitely maintained the hallmarks of the franchise with the opening phone call, the um, the opening scene where you get somebody killed off and at the start you've got you've got the uh, the voice of Ghostface as always. Watch your favorite scary movie. Starts off starts off as a little bit of banter and then all and then all hell breaks loose. Um, so you've got well, say Roger L. Jackson is back as the voice of Ghostface and he is just as deliciously evil as he has been. In the previous films in the franchise, um, and not and um, in terms in terms of one of those elements, the, the uh, in terms of one of those hallmarks, the ghost face reveal, the reveal of who Ghost Face is, just uh, a chef's kiss on how shocking the reveal was it is just incredible how well that was done and you've got a new set of you've also got a new set of rules as well so you've got that as well uh the characters um The characters, oh boy, the characters, where do we begin with uh, the characters? Um, so let's go through, uh, let's go through the, uh, the cast. You've got, um, you've got Melissa Barrera, who uh, is Sam Carpenter, and yes, that is a reference to John Carpenter. Uh, you've also got uh, Kyle Golner as Vince Schneider. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think who that is a reference to. Uh, you've got uh, Mason Gooding as Chad Meeks Martin. Um, now I believe. I believe there's another... Uh, yes, it is. Uh, yeah, he is related to Randy Meeks, who was part of the original trilogy, portrayed by Jamie Kennedy. You've got Mikey Madison as Amber Freeman. Wes Hicks, portrayed by Dylan Minnette, who has had... Uh, who's got a pretty extensive resume on his end. He's been part of... The, he's been part of the Goosebumps franchise with the uh, Goosebumps film in 2015. He was part of 13 Reasons Why. He was in, he was in another, he was in a couple of other horror films: Don't Breathe in 2016 and The Open House in 2018. Other TV shows he's been in, involved with are Lost, Grey's Anatomy, Supernatural, Prison Break, and Marvel's Agents of Shield. Interestingly, he portrayed Clay Jensen in 13 Reasons Why. He's also got a music career. As part of the group Wallows, um, there's been a, it's been a. I'm pretty sure there's been a couple of others that he was uh, part of as well. No, I'm thinking. No, it's not. I'm thinking of somebody else. Um, yeah, I am definitely thinking of somebody else. Yeah. So that being said, um, you've got uh, Jenny. Uh, you've got you've got Jenna Ortega who who, who is also. Who's also been part of the, um, who's also done a lot of um, horror related uh, projects. Uh, Insidious, The Babysitter, Killer Queen. Uh, she's got a couple of pro she's got a couple of other projects coming out soon. Uh, Studio Six 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 and simply X. Um, television wise, she's been she was uh, part of the. Bother. She was part of the Richie Rich TV series, which, yes, is the same Richie Rich, I think. Yes, it's the, um, yeah, loosely based on the uh, the Harvey comics, which got adapted into a film starring Macaulay Culkin. Um, 
Alina of Avalor, which was a, a Disney Channel series uh, in 2016, and you also had a. You had a, uh, a. She was also in a crossover. Uh, she was Princess Isabel. Um, there was a crossover between Sophia the First and Alina of Avalor with Alina and the Secrets of Avalor. Um, she was part of the Netflix TV. She was part of the TV series You. Uh, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Uh, Camp Cretaceous. She is Wednesday Adams in the uh, TV series Wednesday, which is uh, coming up soon. Also coming to Netflix, which is part of the Adams Family uh, franchise. Um, so yeah, she's still in the early days of her career. Uh, now I'm pretty sure. You correct me if I'm wrong. Is she related to? Is she related to Kenny Ortega? Right, hang on. Pretty sure. Is she? Ah, but not no, they're not related. No, it's just by coincidence they have the same. Uh, Jack Quaid. Um, as Richie, uh, I say Je uh, Jenna plays Tara. Carpenter, who is uh, Sam's sister. Uh, Jack Quaid, uh, he is the son of Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan. Uh, he's also got he's also got uh, an uncle, Randy Quaid, who's also uh, well known. Um, he was in the uh, Hunger Games franchise as uh, Marvel. Um, what else has he been in? He was got he was he had Logan Lucky in 2017, Rampage in 2018, which was based on the video game series, uh, Small Foots Plus One, uh, TV wise, um, he was in he's in Star Trek Lower Decks, which is um if he's a voice role for that, he is part of a, he's part of the Middle Earth games. As well as uh, Durhail, so he's uh, so he's pretty busy. He's got he's also got an upcoming vo uh, voiceover project, My Adventures with Superman, where he portrays the title character Clark Kent, uh, Clark Kent, Clark Kent, uh, Kal El, and Superman, Wh whatever you want. Yeah, um, you've got Marley Shelton. As Sheriff Judy Hicks making her return. Uh, there's right there that name I'm just gonna skip over mainly for spoiler purposes. Um, uh, Jasmine Savoy Brown as Mindy, uh, who is Chad's, who's related to Chad. Uh, you've got Sonia Ben Amar as Liv McKenzie. You've got uh, Reggie Conquest as Deputy Farney. Roger Lyle Jackson, I've already mentioned. Um, Heather Heather Matazaro as Martha Meeks. So you got a few, you got a you got a you got a trio of Meeks in there. Uh, Chester Tam as Deputy Vinson. And then you've got the legacy characters. The legacy characters are back. You've got Courtney Cox back as Gail. David Arquette back as Dewey, and Nev Campbell as Sydney. Prescott and my word you can see they have tried to move on you can see that they've tried to move on from everything that's happened but once Ghostface rears his ugly head once again um, they kind of don't have a choice because they need to help this new generation um, they need to help this new generation um work out who Ghostface is and how to stop. There are one or two characters, as far as the new characters are concerned, that um, that are uh, forgettable. They don't really do much on screen, but that's like the only major criticism that I have with them. Uh, the legacy characters, fantastic, as always. And uh, a, a lot of the new characters uh, are really good um, as well. Especially, especially when you have the point where they're trying to like pit the blame on each other. Um, 
So, um, so there are a few other there are a few other cameos uh, as well, but again, I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding uh, the cameos because again, goes into spoiler territory. Um, so there's that. Uh, the visuals. Um, let's just say this is up there. This is possibly the most graphic film in the franchise as far as the uh, the kills are concerned. I haven't. We haven't really seen this sort of brutality since the first film. So. It's it's great that they've managed to go right back to the beginning as far as the uh, the brutality of Ghostface kills are concerned. I say there are one or two that stand out in pretty gruesome, um, uh, pretty gruesome manners. Um, and there's uh, there's uh, there, there were one or two deaths where that they just like came out of nowhere, and I was just sitting there like, what the hell just happened? One of them ties into the ghost face reveal. But again, I'm not going to go into detail regarding the ghost face reveal because that's, that's, because I mean, come on, it's, a, it, it, come on, this is Scream. You're supposed to guess who the ghost face is. Uh, there's great cinematography uh, throughout uh, as well with, with all the, uh, the editing and the uh, camera work, the lighting and, um, and everything else. Uh, so yeah, massive props to uh, the Radio Silence team, who, like I said, they did Ready or Not uh, a couple of years ago. So they so massive props to them for paying homage to a very iconic horror movie uh, franchise with Scream. And the last thing I put in here is simply Wes would be proud. Now I would. Now I'm giving this film a nine out of. 10, mainly for the fact that, uh, like I mentioned there, you've got a couple of characters that are some a little bit forgettable in some aspects, but everything else falls into place brilliantly. There are one or there are there is one particular cameo where I was just like so elated that uh, they actually managed to get that cameo in place because it's. <sighs> It is without it's it's without a doubt one of the best pieces of fan service in the horror community. It's it's without a doubt one of the best pieces of fan service in the horror community, in terms of cameos. Um, so much much like uh, much like uh, Free Guy, which had Jack Jack Septicai as one of the uh, uh, one of the cameos. It was absolutely fantastic. So that being said, um. So that being said, if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, it's still in cinemas right now once this video goes live. But I wouldn't be too surprised. Um, I wouldn't. Uh, I say it should be out on um, streaming services and uh, home media at some point in the next couple of months. So there we go. That is my review of. I say I can't. I can't recommend this enough. But I would strongly suggest watching the rest of the franchise as soon as you can before diving yourself into this new one or you can uh, or you can just binge the binge all five films and may as well add the tv series to that uh, to the mix as well although the tv series isn't necessarily tied into the main films it still has elements of it still has the elements of the franchise in the um the tv series that i say but as far as this film itself is concerned, cannot recommend it enough, especially if you're a long-time fan of the franchise like myself. So that's my review of uh, Scream, uh, basically Scream 5. Uh, my next review is going to be Sing 2. Haven't seen the first one yet, but I'm going to get round to that uh, this week. And I should be able to get Sing 2 out of the way over the course of the next week or so. So that being said, hope you enjoyed this uh, spoiler-free review of Scream. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be uh, a creature activist like myself, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell to join the notification squad so you don't miss anything that I do on this channel. So that being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. And always remember to stay creature active. <laughs>